In today's lecture, we'll be discussing the nature of sociology. Before we begin, let us look at these two definitions of sociology given by Weber and the father of sociology, August Comte. Now, as you can see, I can just highlight the keywords for you. That sociology is a science and it attempts for interpretative understanding of social action. We all know what is a social action and what sociologists do is they give a cause and effect relationship of what is happening in the society. So they try to understand it rather than creating any ethics or norms as to how the society should function. Now moving ahead, we have to first understand what is science. We have heard so many times that sociology is a science. It is a kind of science only, but how come? So first let us understand what is science. Science is synonymous to logic, to reliability and to validity. That means all the experiments that we did in school, if you remember, and in colleges, or the scientists that, uh, who keep on experimenting and discovering new things, first of all, they have some logic behind it. Then they rely on it and the tests that they perform, the experiments that they perform, they have some kind of reliability and validity. It is based on a certain system. There are certain laws and phenomena uh, under which or uh, within the lines of which the experiment follows. There is a scope for investigation, assessment. It explains why. Why does something happen? We can take the help of science to understand this. It generalizes. If an apple is falling from the tree at one city, it will fall in the same way in another city too. That means it is generalizing the concepts and it predicts that means if the apple has fallen now we can predict that due to gravity the apples will fall again so this is how our science gives answers now understanding natural science versus social science to study sociology we need to study it scientifically Okay. And these were the efforts which were done by early social thinkers. The early social thinkers stressed on the scientific study of social science because they thought that it is a kind of science only and there is a scope of various uh, tests of science which can be applicable here also. But as time progressed, sociologists started calling it as a social science which was independent Although it is a kind of science and we can um, test the um, various laws and various theories that are there in social sciences, but it is not a pure science because it is the study of humans and humans are passive objects. Passive people cannot be tested in the laboratory. The generalization cannot be done because every society is different. Therefore, it is a it is not a social science. Then what kind of a science is it? Sociology as a science, it means that there are certain scientific, uh, scientific methods. The principles, so the theories that are made, they are easy to verify. When they can be verified, that means it is reliable and the tests or the results are valid. Some generalizations can be made, but not always and not everywhere. There can be certain predictions, for example, if there is a village where there is a practice of child marriage and it has been going on from a really long time and there is a certain pattern of its declining or increasing, then we can predict that what will happen in the future. There is empirical and factual data. That means it can be measured. What we have uh, understood, what we have taken out, all those results can be measured. Now, important thing here is all the theories are cumulative that is built upon one another. If one theory is made, we can build many theories on the basis of that one theory and the result will depend on the societies and how the people behave and what are the results. Now, there's a definition by Giddens, as you can see, sociology is a science in the sense that it involves systematic methods of investigation. There are systematic methods of investigation. We cannot go out of the line and we cannot 
we have to have a theoretical framework and these theories can be evaluated and they are backed by evidence and also logical argument coming to the characteristics what are the characteristics of sociology you know that social sciences are value free discipline the values of society and the influence on social behavior of these values are studied that means the values of society for example we took the example of child marriage another example can be dowry if there is a practice of dowry in one village then we can understand and we can check the influence of this kind of value which is accepted in the village and the people's behavior of that value whether they are accepting it whether they are revolting it whether they have arguments against or in favor of it now it is not normative it just studies it does not give guidelines it study is that the guidelines that are already existing in the society according to that how the society behaves it is empirical that means the phenomena it can be analyzed it can be measured it is an abstract discipline that means there can be abstract answers and the sociologist has to study them has to check on them on the basis of the um, information of the phenomena of the theories that are already there it can also be a general science in that way we can say that some of the theories some of the principles they can be generalized coming to the scope now there are two types of schools that we can study under the scope one is the specialist school and the second one is the synthetic school the proponents of specialist school are simmel weber eftonis they consider sociology as an independent science which is a pure science and it has limited scope as it is very specific on the other hand the synthetic school the proponents of which are durkheim comte spencer sorokin and hobhaus they say that sociology or social sciences are related to each other all the subjects in social sciences they are related to each other and because it is interdisciplinary there is a vast scope and not limited scope of it now coming to the limitations as we know that sociology social sciences are very different from pure sciences so the limitations can be objectivity we know that humans cannot be objective all the time there is scope for subjectivity second extent of accuracy and reliability you know that all the results are not going to be always accurate and always reliable because of the many human errors that are involved lack of predictability there are times when you can predict and the prediction would be correct but there are times when the prediction cannot be made and it can be wrong also lack of laboratory research as we already discussed certain terminologies and exactitude that is limitation of time and space this is an important term please remember it let us discuss some questions now first question sociology studies things as it is and not as it is ought to be very beautiful line so as a science sociology is necessarily silent about the questions of value because we read that it is value free what type of science is sociology categorized here at so this is categorical science this is not pure or applied science this is categorical science coming to question number 2 which turn revolutions led to the emergence of sociology so sociology was emerged after the french revolution and the industrial revolution when a lot of changes were taking place in the society and there was a birth of logic and rationality the changes that were happening science and mathematics could not answer them the changes were happening on a very drastic level very quickly and there was a change in the society and the people so a new discipline a new type of science was required to understand this behavior that was happening and that was uh, changing all the dimensions therefore after the french revolution and industrial revolution sociology emerged as a discipline i hope you got the lecture thank you for watching